So when we talk about black brands, we always talk about like quote urban brands a lot. Mm-hmm. But so we had an interesting conversation with Dapper Dan about um, why there hasn't been luxury brands, yeah. and he had his own opinions. Why do you think there hasn't been uh, black luxury brands? I think luxury is built on heritage, and we haven't really had a brand around long enough to build a heritage. That's no. you know. So you think you know the luxury brands in the traditional sense of who we know, like they've been around for a hundred years. We've not had, now we've been around for a hundred years, but we've not been able to build a brand that is around for a hundred years. Like even if you look at who the oldest female designer is in the United States, I haven't been able to find anyone other than Elizabeth Keckley. Elizabeth Keckley designed for Abraham Lincoln's wife. She bought her and her son's freedom through design. She is the, oldest designer that I can find in the US. And, you know, and so imagine if she had a kept that collection because everything she was doing was luxury. Mm-hmm. She was producing for the president's wife and all his friends. So that woman was like on a high, high level. Well, Vir- Virgil was luxury too. Virgil was luxury. As yeah. a designer. It's, yeah. Who's the longest lasting luxury brand that we have? Mm. That's interesting. Now I'm thinking about the brands. There's always a stop. There's always there's a stop. A progress of it. Well, yeah. We haven't had a lot of luxury, black luxury mm-hmm. brands. Like I said. Christian, or even brands. Christian Louboutin's black. Yeah. Virgil's black. I got. That's it. That I could think of. Well, Puff just got Sean John back. But that's not a luxury. I'm, I'm just saying even brands, period. Well, the yeah. long, like decades of having a brand. Right? Make tr- Tracy Reese. She's had her brand for a long time. Okay. Um, There's just not a lot. Not a lot. No. And why do you think that that is as far as the the, the lifespan? Why is the life? Because even we've had bands that's been successful. Fubu, they made a bunch of money. We actually just have put interviewed Damon John. Yep, I saw it. Um, it was good. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. So <laughs> they they made a lot of money. Um, Sean John made a lot of money, then sold. Rockaway made money, then they sold their company. Um, so people have experienced success. Right. Even Carl Kanai, at one point, that it was a successful brand. Absolutely. But it, it seems like it. It seems like it's a cycle where it start off, you know, underdog, people start to root for you and rappers start to champion it and then you get successful and then it just becomes corny and then it becomes like a laughing stock almost. And we had an interesting conversation with Jim Jones a few years ago, very controversial, but he had some insight <laughs> onto his, his thoughts on it. What did he say? Well, he thought that all of those fashion brands in the, in the 90s and the 2000s were knockoff brands. Mm. He was like, the, they were knockoffs off of what, like he was like that the people in the culture like Diddy, like Jay were smart enough to understand what was going on, what was really moving culture. And it wasn't really innovative. It was more knockoff of Nordica or mm-hmm. Polo. So he was like, well, why am I going to buy this when I can just buy Nordica? People were disappointed how he said it because he was pretty much saying that he would rather support Nordica than support. Mm. But I actually understand the no rationale. No comment. <laughs> but I understand it, but I understand the rationale. It was very controversial, but I do understand the rationale. That is a mindset. That's why these brands haven't been able to be successful. Because yeah. yeah. after a certain while, it's looked at as like Rockaway like is a joke. Yeah. Or Fubu spoof. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not looked at like at first it's cool, but then it's like, I'm not wearing that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you have to think though. You have to put a lot of money into sustaining a brand. But is that psychology? Is that outside of the money? Is that like a black psychology that we devalue things of our own? In some cases, yeah. In some cases, we do. But even when you just said that, I'm like, what he don't know is like some of those brands they go to our culture, or go to black. They went to black designers to get inspired to do what they did. Mm -hmm. Like so many of those brands that have come up, the great American brands, like got inspired by black designers from the 80s and 90s. I said there was. I didn't know what Tommy Hilfiger was before I saw Grand Poobah wear it. Straight and, up on your own TV rap. And and even in this book, like there is you'll see some pages where basically it's like rap lyrics that we hope people will start to to say, yeah. you know, like go and spend a G on a fee shopping spree. Like, you know, like because I'm like, we have the power to like put our black designers where they need to be, mm-hmm. especially music. Like as 
especially music, we have that opportunity. Like even red carpets, thank goodness, more actors and actresses now are showing up on red carpets wearing black designers. But like, we have that power. Lisa Ray, I'm supporting everything. Right, like, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because like, I bring it to Grand Poobah thing because Ace Apple was just a, a, yep. the award re recipient at, at, the, at your show. They asked him who his favorite people in fashion, in the history of fashion. He had Grand Poobah, Kanye West, and Pharrell. And then I started thinking about the conversation we were having with uh, Damon John about, yes, here in America, there is a culture, right? But hip hop culture is throughout the world. Absolutely. And so we live in a world where retro comes into to play. And so that era of the 90s, I feel like that might, I mean, if I travel to Japan, you might still be able to see it. I mean, it's coming back now. Bag, everybody wearing so baggy jeans. That's where I'm going. Yeah. So like, even like the Carl Kanaz, uh, Walker Wear, FUBU, even Echo at a certain point people were, do you feel like? Did you ever wear Fubu? I never wore Fubu. Did you ever wear Echo? I did. Oh well, no, I did. I'm not. I'm lying. I think I seen Nas wear an Esco T-shirt, and I wanted that T-shirt. Did you ever wear Carcanar? I did. Huh? Going through my I'm, just, I'm just asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. Before. And I wore Sean John, and I wore cross Rockwell. colors. I know y'all wore cross colors. No. Cross colors, I won it. I don't think I got cross it. But I was still wearing Bugle Boy at that point. I was, okay. We were too young. It was okay. too young. Okay. But I'm asking you that question because it's like, we can talk about supporting black brands, but yeah. Jim Jones, he actually, it was very controversial what he said, but it's extremely insightful. Because yeah. I never wore FUBU ever in life. Yeah. I wore Rock Aware a little bit. Sean John and I wore. Um, but New a job. lot of these black brands, we didn't support them. Yeah. So we can champion it, and but... We gotta have an honest conversation. Yeah, but I, what I was going is like, had they had the business acumen to know that, hold on to it, maybe I could license it because that's what they did with FUBU was be able to license right. it throughout the world. Yeah. Whereas now when those brands retro into these other, you know, uh, locations throughout the world, there isn't that opportunity you, anymore. You know, I think the issue is black brand. I think that Virgil cracked the code by just having a luxury brand. Mm -hmm. Once you get boxed in a corner as being a black brand, white people don't want to support it. Well, but I don't, when it came, it wasn't luxury. Virgil? Yeah. But regardless, it was never looked at as a black brand. Off-White was never looked at as a black brand. Never. Never. It was never looked at as a black brand. Mm -hmm. It was just off-White. Even Yeezy. Yeezy, I mean, he's Kanye West, so it's easier for him to, to reach that status. Mm -hmm. But other rappers, when they put their brands out, it was like, oh, this is urban. Yeezy was just Yeezy. Right. And I feel like that is something that is... is very important to crack that code because once you get put in a box as a black anything, even with us as a black media, it, it's very stifling. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that you alienate the vast majority of other people and then eventually your own people start to hate on you. Mm. You know, it. I think where we kind of mess up is or, or where I think there's some opportunity is like creating the bridge. And like, how do you, as a black brand, how do you create a bridge so that you're like, basically my brand, cause at the end of the day, you want everybody to buy it, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. you don't want your identity to then dictate who oh, buys right. what you sell, like that, but that's what that's, that's so they, limiting. That's how they box you in the corner. That's yeah. what Diddy was saying with when he, um Diageo. That's one of his low. He was like, his liquor got branded as hip hop and mm. only and he's like, so he can't be in steakhouses and, and other restaurants. Yeah. Seems like they box you in. But that happens across the board in, in every industry. It's like if you're black, you get boxed in. And that's so limiting. It is you, limiting. You're not gonna yeah. be able to become Casamigos if you're just a black liquor brand. But, but Casamigos is never described as just a uh, Mexican brand or just George Clooney. Like, you know, it's like a white brand was never described as just, you know- A white that. brand. It's for everybody. But yeah. black brands are always described as black brands. It's true, but look at Telfar. Everybody's wearing Telfar. Incredible. Black, white, old, young, rich, poor. Just a brand. It's just a brand. And now I think the, the terminology has changed to more than just brand, it's, it's a designer. Yeah. Right? Like, this is a designer. Right. Yeah. So I, I do think it's possible to be a Black person, to build a brand, to build it even around Black people, but to still have, like, a larger reach. For yeah. sure.